It wasn't long before Bob's old officer poked his head round my door and said, You know we struck an iceberg. I know you struck something, I told him, not thinking it anything serious and feeling none too pleased. Then he said, The water's up to F deck in the mailroom. Now we've been running under a big head of steam, and the sudden stopping of the engines lifted every safety valve. And as a result, the steam roared off and all across. The row was absolutely deafening. Added to that, the engineers started to blow the boilers down. Shout as loud as you like. No one could hear a word. When the boats were stripped and cleared, they were swung out and lowered to the level of the boat deck. Just a little while before they were ready to swing out, I happened to meet the captain. And I asked him, by cupping my hands over his ear and yelling at the top of my voice, Shall I get the women and children away, sir? He just nodded, so I started to fill the first boat. As time went on, I could see the bows of the ship getting steadily lower and lower in the water. Now between lowering one boat and another, I frequently took a run forward and a quick look down the long stairway that led from the boat deck three or four decks down. Frankly, I'm never likely to forget the sight of that cold greenish water creeping step by step up that stairway. Some of the lights were shining down on the water, and others already submerged were giving it a sort of ghastly transparency. Several of us scrambled up onto the slippery bottom of the raft, and it was from there I saw the Titanic sink. As I watched, I could see her bow getting deeper and deeper in the water, with the foremost sticking up above the surface, whilst her stern lifted higher and higher, till it was right out of the water. When she got to an angle of about 60 degrees, there was a sullen sort of rumbling roar, as her massive boilers all left their beds and went crashing down through the boat's heads and everything that stood in their way. Up to that moment, she had stood out as clear as clear with her rows of electric lights all burning. When the boilers broke away, she was, of course, plunged into absolute darkness. Though her huge black outline was still perfectly distinct up against the stars and sky. Slowly, she reared up on end, till at last she was absolutely perpendicular. Then, quite quietly, but quicker and quicker, she seemed just to slide away under the surface and disappear. As she vanished, everyone round me on the upturned boat, as though they could hardly believe it, just said, She's gone.